Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, After Buzzers. Welcome to After Buzz TV. I'm your host, JJ Snyder. Welcome to this very special Spotlight on Showrunner and Creators Edition, Glenn Mazzara. Hey, JJ. Glenn. Yes. Great Thanks to have me. you here. Thanks for having me. Well, you fit in this series perfectly. You're a creator and a showrunner, mm -hmm. but also an executive producer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And writer for mm -hmm. a new show, Damien, that is premiering tonight on the A&E Network at 10 o'clock. That's right. Yeah. It's seven hours away. I'm very excited about it. I can't wait for uh, the world to see it. I bet. Now, I know you were at Comic-Con talking about it last mm -hmm. July. Mm -hmm. So it's been months probably leading up to tonight. Am I, are you ready for this it's, thing? It's been years. When we <laughs> first met about this uh, project, it was summer 2013. So I wrote that script over you know the holidays going into 2014 we sold it we staffed uh you know fall of 2014 we shot in 2015 we uh you know stopped shooting in in last summer but i was doing post until about christmas and now we've been waiting three months because we were moved from lifetime to a and e and uh so we're partnered with bates motel and this is when they they premiere tonight as well at nine o'clock and um, so it's it's been like making a feature. It's it's, been, it's it usually you know TV is like boom boom boom, but this was uh, we had a lot of time to, to work on this. Well, which is which is really amazing mm -hmm. um, because you're you're not just starting a new show; you're sort of um, continuing mm -hmm. uh, this storyline, right? So yeah, it's a sequel to the 1976 film. So you know, Damien Thorne is the little boy in the Omen. And, you know, the way I explain it is the creepy kid from The Omen grows up and gets his own show. So <laughs> that's what our show is. Oh, my is. gosh. <laughs> that's how that's I perfect. Just, that's that's how your tagline right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, a creepy little kid indeed. And I believe we have a few photos from there. Um, by the way, Marissa is in the booth um, helping us out today. She's uh, Thank you, one of the best engineers around here. So we, we really scored with her. Fantastic. Um, we have some photos uh, from The Omen, actually. Uh, no, the that's from the show. That, uh, yes, it is. I'm, I'm trying to. I was kind of trying to prompt her to. There that's, we go. Ha. The yeah. So speaking of creepy little kids, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm, yeah. This film was huge in 1976. Yeah, I think so, and it, it left an impression on people. People remember it, and they, you know, it, it kind of fit the time. There was a bit of conspiracy around it. There was a, an apocalyptic mm. movement at that time. In the late 70s, people were convinced that, that the Bible was a prophecy and the world was coming to an end, and mm -hmm. this played right into that. So it's there's a there's a lot of material that we could pull from for our show. Well, and and, and indeed the the biblical theme is is alive and well. So here we are. Here we have the movie mm -hmm. poster of mm -hmm. Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, mm -hmm. and of course the creepy little Damien. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. really creepy. Yeah. Now I um. I was teeny tiny when the film came out, mm -hmm. um, so I think my brother and sister were allowed to see it. I wasn't, so I had to go back and, and watch it now. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, I was afraid just of the horror genre. I was like, how scary is this going to be? Mm -hmm. But there's a psychological thriller element to it, Yes. Um, more so than um, people jumping out behind a door with a chainsaw, you know? Yeah, it's, it's cool. you, you get the sense that there's something else going on. And, and imagine if, you know, you were a character in that movie. You could say, well, wait a second, this happened and then this happened. And, and, and it, just, it, it doesn't make sense, you know, and somebody would say, oh, you're just seeing coincidences or something like that. So, so you know, we've all heard these weird little stories like how do you explain this or how do you explain that, yes. you know? And so, so this was a movie about that in some sense. I mean, it was a lot of, about a lot of other stuff. But, you know, when we started making the show, we really wanted it to feel like that. We wanted it to feel 
somewhat plausible, something that, you know, if you, like it takes place in this world, and if you were to talk about these events, people would think you were crazy, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so, so, and yet you feel something's going on. And so that psychological thriller element was something that was in the film and something that, that we've brought into the show. Well, I think it was a really important part of the film because it was the believability of this, mm -hmm. this couple, this married couple, mm -hmm. seemingly normal married couple. Um, the believability that their situation, uh, it really un world for them they mm -hmm. didn't understand what was going on the whole film was like what is going on here with yeah, this little boy exactly yeah yes mm -hmm. um okay so uh that film went on by the way to have uh two sequels mm -hmm. however your series is picking up right after that first film yeah we what happened was you know damien is you know a certain kid in that film you know there's there's a, 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 a you get a sense that he doesn't know what's going on and you're not sure and then in the last shot you're very you're convinced he he knows what's going on the other two sequels the two sequels start to put him down a path where he's very aware and it just you know as he become as people become suspicious of him they die, and by the third, you know, he's sort of power hungry, and 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 it's very clear. And that movie ends the story. So, I really wanted it this to be a character piece about that mm -hmm. character. So I said, okay, well, what if we, you know, the fact that he's an antichrist, okay, and Christ was baptized when he was thirty. That's when he started teaching. That's when he started building the church. There's sort of this gap between. You know, there's a story in the Bible um, when he's 12, and then there's this gap until he's 30. Mm -hmm. So, I, so I said, okay, we could use that gap, and we could start saying that you know Damien is an antichrist, and how does he go around, and how does he start to build a church, and how does he start, how does he get activated, and all of that, and that's unique. I haven't seen anyone tell that story. You know, mm -hmm. I think the expectation, to be honest, is that he is you know, that evil character fully formed. And, and I want to see that process. You know, I, I, I think that there's, there could be a real version of somebody bringing about the end of the world. I mean, there, there, there could be, you know, you could have a political leader take charge and, and you, you, could, you could certainly see how world wars unfold, you know? And so, so what happens if one happens in our world? So that's the story I want to tell, and I think that there's there's a, to do that we had to, you know, sort of ignore those other two sequels. Yes, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. So was that kind of creatively your decision? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe was it Fox came to you and said, yeah. "Can you develop this story?" Yeah, Fox said we have this property, and we know Bates Motel is doing well, and Hannibal is doing well, and we have The Omen, and and they tried to reboot The Omen as a TV show. There's an Omen Four. Um, about oh. Damien's daughter, Delia, and and uh, I think her name is Delia, and she she um, you know is just a, a sinister little girl, and really every commercial break, someone's just getting killed for no reason. They look at her, she stares at them, and then they run down mm -hmm. the street and they get killed, and it falls into a very predictive pattern. Okay. So I didn't. So that was an example of what I didn't want to do. You know, I I just that wasn't you know just that they didn't interest me as a writer so i worked on my idea and 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 pitch and i brought it back and i said okay this is how i would approach this material you know is this what you were looking for and they said yeah we haven't seen that before so let's try it so then i wrote the script and 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 people responded to that and then the the ball started rolling cool i think it's it it makes sense to me too as a audience member um because i remember the film from my childhood mm -hmm. so the concept now that he would be <clears throat> 30 years old is, you know, kind of makes sense in my own timeline. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, um, we're kind neat. of fudging the, uh, I'm sorry, I a cut little. you off. Uh, uh, yeah, we're but fudging the timeline close. a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah. I mean, Bates Motel has cell phones and close. stuff. So, so, so that's fine. And, and I think people, you know, may have this expectation that, oh, he's going to be this sinister guy doing this and and you know that show exists it's called lucifer and so you know i wanted to do something that was different and 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 hopefully you know the audience gets that this is about a a long journey for our character interesting and on that note you have done something different that mm -hmm. that i have noted and that is that 
this guy, uh, Damien, played by Bradley James, mm -hmm. um, is kind of likable when mm -hmm. we we meet him. Um, this is going to be a kind of a complex situation. This is not straight out the son of the devil uh, as we might expect him. This is right. a little more well, complicated than that. Well, think about this, you know, and he, 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 I haven't really talked about this too much, but the Antichrist in the Bible, okay, he's called the beast in the Bible, is supposed to be worshipped. People are supposed to follow him. He, people see him as a Messiah, as a Savior. So if Damien is too evil, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 one, we've seen that story, and two, you know, that's not actually what the Bible is saying. So I really hmm. spent time, you know, I was raised Catholic, and, and I have a, an uncle who's a priest, and, and, and um, I went to Catholic school for 12 years. I spent oh, a lot as of, did I. So. Okay, so, you, so, uh, so you've been through it, too. So, so, you know, I spent a lot of time really thinking about, okay, if this was real, you know, a messiah, okay, he's not, no one's saying he's a false messiah. They're saying he's the messiah. So he has to be charismatic. He has to be charming. He mm -hmm. has to be lovable. He has to be, you know, um, um, someone that people want to follow, you know, uh, uh, y you know, it's, it's, it, it, he can't be sinister. And, and I think there's a, a version of this that we've seen on TV many times where there's someone who's, you know, saying what the audience wants and then they turn around and they threaten to have somebody killed or something. You know, we've seen that kind of character on TV and I, I wanted to shake it up. I think it's very interesting. It You kind of take a step beyond the stereotype mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the son of Satan, of, you know, the the guy in the glowing red with the... Yeah. Uh, What's the uh, guy? Pitchfork. He's a, the, yeah. the pitchfork. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but you, you, the story kind of goes a step beyond that and is sort of like, well, let's look at w what is evil. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, evil exists in the world. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. So how do we explain that? Well, that, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's something that, you know, in the original film, there was a photographer. Yes. And, and that photographer took photographs of other people and then you could see black lines going through them and it was clear they were marked for death and he, he takes his own picture and and stuff and 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 that was really creepy and scary and, and a wonderful part of that film jennings so, i believe yeah the character's yeah, yeah. name was yes. so i started i started thinking about that and but i have a real interest in in um war photography okay i think i think what war photographers do is really amazing and there are guys like Don McCullen or James Notchway or Sebastio Sagado takes amazing pictures he's my favorite and and so you you see what these people do they put themselves in harm's way and 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 but they have to bear witness okay they can't really get involved so it's a tricky situation so if Damien did that and he put himself in harm's way you know all the evil that's circling around him he doesn't want to understand that he's part of that that he's a cause of that and so so and i think photojournalism is incredibly relevant today you know and i've mm. been saying you know we didn't really i think i don't think the world understood the syrian migrant crisis until we saw that photograph of that little boy washed up on the beach right Absolutely. okay you know and and then that hit home for everybody mm -hmm. you know and so damien's mm -hmm. the kind of person who's there he's the kind of person taking those photos he's you know it's that's where he's living and so you know how when you see that much evil mm -hmm. you know i think damien is the kind of person is saying if there's a god why would he allow this much evil to take place and so that there's an element of that character that will end up developing in you know, future episodes as well. I feel like the war photography storyline is extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I found it, it was a tie-in to the original film in that Jenny, the character of Jennings in the original film. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, when the, the um, in the original film, when the sword came down from the top of the church yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and got that guy <laughs> in the ground, that was crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, do you guys remember that image? That was just, that was nuts. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, it, it's so it's a tie into the original film in that way you know how interesting Damien would end up being a photographer mm -hmm. and and it is true you're putting him in a place where if you really step back and look at it where else in the world can you bear witness mm -hmm. to human evil mm -hmm. more than in war so 
it's really interesting. Yeah, and that's that's well, um, thank you. That that's something I want to you know continue to develop. I think that's that's important for that character. You know, and a lot of it has to be when you're you're sitting down and you're thinking about you know creating a show like what am I going to make the guy a cop, a doctor, a lawyer? Mm-hmm. You know, like we have these tables. I'm like, well, I really haven't seen this. So let's, you know, again, the expectation is him being a a senator, you know, I think, or the head of some corporation, some so, evil corporation, like in the, the third one. His father was a, an, a diplomat, a yeah, an ambassador. ambassador. Right. Did you toy, let me get inside your writer mind for a minute. Did you toy with another profession for him at any time? No, I felt like he, he would be on the run. I think he would be kind of, a photographer is a good place to, to start. Freelance, you like know, not um, mm-hmm, kind of. You know, one of the things mm-hmm. I was thinking about is, is you know, people expect him to be, you know, like I, I, I saw something where somebody was saying, well, how can a war photographer, you know, become the antichrist? Okay, well, Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> you know that like well, a, 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 anything goes sometimes he you know? certainly was yeah, yeah I mean just think That's about right. that like everybody's got a right. day job it's a matter of what the story is so you know it was either that or he could have been a bus boy but I like war photographer ah, Jesus was yeah. a carpenter yeah yeah all right, so the, the, the story picks up with him, a war photographer, but he's based out of New York City, mm-hmm. um, uh, which was where the story takes place. And um, let's talk about the, the production elements of the show, because you actually are going to use footage from the mm-hmm. film, mm-hmm. correct? So yeah. you get to weave that into the story. So you're paying just direct homage to the original story. Yeah, you know, that was something that... Um... You, you can't take it for granted that everybody has seen this film. Okay. You, you can't, there's a lot of people, you know, I think, I think some people saw it when they were little and then, you know, but some people maybe just know it from the, the remakes or they never went back and watched it or, uh, or what have you, you know, you can't, you can't take it for, for granted. So we needed to get some of that information out because, you know, and, but, I didn't want to have too much of that, and I thought I love that film, and I've never seen a show use footage from a, an original film as repressed memories coming to the forefront. Mm. I just hadn't seen that. Okay, not playing like a flashback, but we're playing you know choppy memories that it's all hitting. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's all sort of surfacing, and 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 we, um, you know, when we started, I, I wrote that into the script. And when we started talking about it, um, some folks in the creative process thought that was nuts. They just thought, <clears throat> excuse me, that hasn't been done. I don't know if it's going to work. And I, I have this editor that I've worked with on, on several other shows, a really talented guy named Hunter Vi, And he knew exactly what I was talking about. So he, you know, took a crack at it and it mm-hmm. worked. And so, But there was some question, were we going to reshoot that material? Yes. You know, some people right. were thinking that. And I said, no, let's just get the original footage it's great and and why mess with it well i think that for people who do remember the movie and um i think anyone uh it it also might be uh really cool for people of a certain generation who clearly remember the movie Mm -hmm. right um it's it's very exciting because it's almost like when you read a book and um it's good and you see the movie and you go it was totally different i'm disappointed in this case, you're like, oh, not only did I like that movie, but it is in this, yeah, in this show, and and, and and it's it's fun to do that to have mm-hmm. those characters. You know, where you know at one point um, in the movie, uh, Gregory Peck goes to see a professor Bugenhagen, okay, and he gets all this information and he gets some daggers to kill Damien and all of that, and. You know, the writers and I were thinking, well, where are those daggers? You yeah. know, what happened? Who's got them? You know, and right. it would be really interesting if some people have some and some people think others are lost, but other people are hiding them. So we, we have, in our mind, we have a plan for where all the daggers are and who's got what. And, and Sure, you know, a lot it's, of the it's, items it's, it's from the fun. film, yeah, right? Yeah. It's kind of so, like a, a prop box that yeah. you get to re- yeah. recreate. Yeah. How neat. Speaking of uh, the cast and mm-hmm. other people who were... Um, important on this film you know this film uh the original film sorry was nominated for two oscars and i believe one for music for best score mm-hmm. with jerry goldsmith mm-hmm. so now you have a very significant um 
person heading up your music, I believe, too, uh, Bear McCreary. Yeah, yeah. So you said uh, music's very important. Yeah, Bear was actually one of the first calls I made. Like, as I was driving oh, really? off the studio a lot, I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I got to get Bear because Bear can do this right away. And Bear's busy. I think he's, you know, he's doing films now and, and he's doing a, a lot of shows and everything. And he's, and he's such a talent. And we worked together on Walking Dead and we really hit a groove. Um, you know, Walking Dead was the first show that I had worked on that had a significant score. So I had to learn as a showrunner, you know, how do you give notes on a score? How do you explain, you know, what the feeling of a particular scene is? And, and you know, and, and Bear and I really developed a, a great way to communicate, you oh, know, neat. on that show. By so, the way, did you call it the, did you call it Walking Dead? I don't I think I, I, I think you kind walk, of shortened it uh, like maybe. like walking dead yeah, like maybe. you know my show yeah, walking no, dead no, it's not my show but, but I, I <laughs> well you were you were to... a big part of it and and a lot of people know you yeah I, I was the, the walking I, dead. I wrote a script season one and then I was I was on for seasons two and three yep so so with bear um so I called him and I said hey you know do you know the the movie the omen he said oh and I'm not kidding you this sounds like something I'm making up he said that, that's one of my favorite scores I said well I think oh. I'm gonna make a show based on that thing about Damien growing up and he said I, I gotta do it so I said great okay so then what he did was he you know we had the rights to the score and he went and recorded there's the famous you know chanting thing Ave Satani so he went and re-recorded that he wrote score to sort of feel like that original score but but updated and then mm -hmm. at some point in a future episode you haven't seen it but it's in episode six um we we have uh the original score plays in the show oh, wow. yeah we were able to to work that in when it made sense emotionally so um yeah there, there was a lot from you know i really wanted to take that movie seriously one of the things i i hate is when somebody you know does a remake or or a sequel and and they don't they're not respectful to that original thing. I agree. You, you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I think you, it's you know, about expectations. Make, of yeah. The, you know, the audience has expectations. Yeah. Right? You have to make it so, your own eventually. Yeah. But, but I really sure. felt like that was a starting point that we needed to, to really, um, um, honor. So by the way, uh, on the day that your, uh, TV show opens mm -hmm. up to this date, how many times do you think you've watched the original film? Did you just, digest it and digest it well don't forget i have some of the original film in the show oh so you've seen clips so i've seen that material yes. probably you know a hundred times but um the original film uh i've probably seen it like at least 15 yeah yeah you know <laughs> you know i you know actually it was enough just to on, give line readings yeah, sometimes <laughs> but enough to quote sometimes but uh you know i watched it with my son recently my 12 year old he loved it what did he uh, think of it he loved it he, he thought it was scary you know he likes scary movies um uh how about the dogs yeah now there are uh rottweilers mm -hmm. in damien the rottweilers are back guys mm -hmm. and you better watch out for them mm -hmm. um Tell, talk about a little bit about the dogs on set. And... Well, that was, that was something else that we thought was an element that fans would be interested in seeing those come back around. You know, I mean, I find them scary on the on the uh, in the original film, and we brought them. You know, you know, we have some great sequences with them. I think, and 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 to tell the truth, the the dogs are the sweetest dogs <laughs> when, they're, <So. laughs> when they're on set. They're yes. just, you know, they're very, very sweet. I, are you yeah. concerned that you might be giving the breed a bad rap a little uh, they bit? They already have a bad rap. I, I think people think Rottweilers are scary, but they're really sweet dogs yes. and they're very trainable dogs. That's mm. why they were used. I think, the, huh. I think I heard that the original film wanted to use wolves and they couldn't train the wolves. I remember we had a wolf on set on um the shield mm -hmm. and you think wolves are gonna you know and go at you or whatever and wolves are really smart so they kind of trot around and they're like yeah i'm not doing that i'm i'm, I'm not you know doing this playing movie. your game yeah i'm not i'm not doing that so we had to bring in some some pit bulls or something for that, for that episode of the shield but with with um the rottweilers they were great and we had it you know 
write the stunts and then train them to do the stunts and everything. And, wow. and we spent a lot of time trying to make them as 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 uh, you know scary and as exciting as possible. I think it's it's interesting for me because um, a, a lot of this world that you're creating is not totally um, explainable. It's mm -hmm. sort of up to the audience to figure it out. So mm -hmm. in my viewer's mind, I see the dogs as sort of uh, like messengers of Satan. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, they're they're definitely supportive of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're on the, they're like messengers of the dark side or something. Yeah, but I think they're protectors. They seem to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, um, there's a time when they appear, you know, there, there are all rules in which they appear. We don't want to, one of the things we're careful about is that you don't want to just keep throwing stuff at the audience so it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? But you want to keep the audience surprised. But you don't, so you sort of need rules, but then you need to sort of undercut the rules at the same time because once the audience figures out the rules, then they get bored. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but then they go, oh, I know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So there are some interesting rules around the, the Rottweilers and some may be apparent and then some others I think will, will be explained further down the road possibly. Interesting. Yeah. So speaking of people who take care of Damien, mm -hmm. sort of um, seems like even going back to the original film, The, the Nanny, mm -hmm. um, that there are people who understand his his uh, position mm -hmm. in the world his, and, and almost are like his, you know, his crew, mm -hmm. even if he doesn't know why he's put on this earth at this point or what his mission is. Uh, but Anne Rutledge. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a, a woman played by Barbara Hershey who's going to be very significant in mm -hmm. this series. Can you explain to me a little bit what her role in all this is? Well, um, Anne Rutledge was a woman who was tasked with raising Damien from afar. Okay, so when we see him at the end of the the uh, original film, you know, he's at his father's casket and he's next to the president. And you get a sense he's going to be raised in, in the White House. Okay, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we had to figure out what happens next. Was he really raised in the White House? Was he, you know, put into schools or whatever? And so we thought you know, there would be a caretaker who takes care of that, okay, who works all that out, but she probably doesn't want to um, reveal herself to him, right? And the idea for this character came from, um, in the movie, there's a nanny who kills herself. She jumps at his <laughs> fifth party. She, she kills herself. What? Do, Can sorry. I do an impression yeah. of her? <laughs> okay, yes, her, I love her, that. Her take is just so, okay. So she's up on the roof mm -hmm. and she goes, it's all for you, Damien. <laughs> That's pretty good, yeah. I was laughing a little yeah, bit too that, much. Yeah. And then plunge. Yeah. Oh, and what that moment to... gets replayed. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, what a way to ruin a kid's party, <laughs> right? All for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, So, So on. she <laughs> does that. And then all of a sudden this other nanny, Mrs. Baylock, appears. And she says to Damien's parents, they say, well, how did you get here? And she says, the agency sent me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get the sense when you're watching that, that she's just lying and that she was sent by evil people to watch this. So as I was watching that movie for, you know, number eight, nine times or whatever, <laughs> um, I thought, well, who's that agency? Like, what if an agency really didn't say that? What if there was an agency that was protecting this guy? You know, a group, some conspiratorial group that was saying, okay, great, Mrs. Baylock, you're up. And then after Mrs. Baylock gets killed, then it's, and you're up. You know what I mean? So that kind yes. of uh, connection I thought was interesting. And just to kind of tee it up, we don't have to over explain that to the audience or whatever, but just to have, you know, Anne coming from the same area that Mrs. Baylock was. And she references, she discusses how she knew Mrs. Baylock and stuff in a future episode. Um, so that was interesting to me. And then, but, and so just to give the audience a little hint of that coming from the movie and that it's still alive today and then revealing further down the road a little bit more information about that. So so we, we're kind of doing a slow burn. We're teasing things out because we don't want to, you know, I think we've got to orient the audience as to who's this Damien, what's happened, da 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 da. And then, and then as Damien finds out more and more about his plight, the audience will find that out.
Yeah, that I mean, th that is the point is that we are starting this series and Damien really doesn't understand his, mm -hmm. his place. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fantastic because as the audience, we get to figure it out. You get to figure him. it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think clearly, though, uh, with like Anne Rutledge's character, there's no doubt even from the 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 idea that this uh, Damien was adopted and the, the priest that adopted him to the father. I mean, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of people who've been in on this. Mm -hmm that you know like facilitators now in your mind are they all presumably working for the devil um there's different groups you, you know you'll, you'll find uh i don't want to give anything away but th this comes up later in the the season that okay that, you know you'll find out that there's other people involved and 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 not everything's all clean so there's different factions there's different agendas and and that's what's interesting i think you know hmm. that that you know there's probably well i'll say there's part of the catholic church that wants to eliminate damien there's probably part of the catholic church that wants to you know have him on their side you know there's uh, other people are either you know want him out of the picture or people uh uh want him for their own purposes so th and he's never sure who's who you know so yes. so that's something that that we're setting up and that's something that hopefully we'll get the chance over multiple seasons to come back and tell that story and and further that out because we have a lot of that stuff uh figured out now a lot of the stuff mm -hmm. comes from this all revolves around the book of revelations mm -hmm. am i correct mm -hmm. okay so that's sort of your the biblical piece i mean there's a lot of religious mm -hmm. um tone in this series mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah i mean mm -hmm. wow um and uh yes damien our character certainly has a, a bit of an allergy to church yeah, yeah. well he physically yeah. i mean <laughs> in, in the movie you know he he doesn't want to go into the church so when we have him dealing with religious stuff you know bradley's always bradley james who plays damien um, is always kind of flinching. He's always kind of, you know, you'll see in the second episode, he actually has to go into a church. And I mean, he does in the first one too, but it always takes a lot out of him. So it's it's a little like, I don't want to say it's his kryptonite. It's not that bad, but it's mm. it's something that um, he's, he pushes through when he has to, you know? It's, yeah, it, it definitely it activates. Physically, yeah, yeah physically things for him physically. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, speaking of Bradley James, mm -hmm. you were with him uh, last July in Comic Con. Yeah. Was that an exciting event? It seems like you had quite a bit of buzz uh, going on about the yeah, show already. I, uh, that was fun. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect because, you know, the show was, was uh, we were just releasing that promo. So mm -hmm. it was really off an announcement. And, and mm. we had, you know, a good attendance to, to that room. And I was really surprised. And, and Bradley comes with his own fans. So there were, were <laughs> girls in the audience holding up, you know, um, we love you, King James. We love you, King Bradley. You I know? think the ladies love him, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could so hear it's just... really cute. Yeah. There was like a murmur of ladies yeah. in the audience mm -hmm. at Comic-Con. Um, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of fun. So, so was, you're getting was, that buzz. It was fun. Yeah. Yes. And some some other new interesting... Uh, I love the supporting cast as well. Please mention some of the folks. Well, um, we have Barbara Hershey. We have mm -hmm. um, um, Scott Wilson from The Walking Dead who played mm -hmm. Herschel. So he's he's in the, the show as well. Uh, Megalyn E.K., who just played uh, Vixen on Arrow. Uh, Omid, she's, she's really great. great. Yeah, she's yeah. great. Yeah, and she she's has more neat. and more to do as she, as she develops mm -hmm. uh, as, as the show, you know, develops. Mm. Um, Omid Abdahi plays uh, one of... Uh, plays like Damien's closest friend who you know he, he's he's actually only known for a few years but he's he's a buddy who's been in the um, the uh, uh, you know has has been with him on assignment as a war photographer yes so is he a photographer too he's like his his partner photographer or yeah. he's more the tech end of things yeah yeah exactly okay. he's kind of yeah. like an assistant but he also shoots stuff but damien's like the celebrity photographer if you will yes yeah, you know he's like the big name so yes because he can walk into the yeah. middle of chaos and yeah. nothing happens to him yeah. as we find out exactly which is crazy and then um, and then we have two other um um cast members we have uh, robin weigart who was on um she played Calamity Jane on Deadwood. She's fantastic. And so she plays a nun from the Vatican who's sent to investigate what's going on around this. Like, so, so that, and she becomes a, a much, much bigger uh, deal in the back. So the Vatican's going to oh. get the heads up because this is, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah this, this is, is the serious. Antichrist. Yeah, yeah. They've been waiting for this and fearing okay. this. So, and then uh, David Meunier plays, uh, who was on, uh, 
Justified. He, mm-hmm. he was, um, was terrific. Oh yes. And so the he, cop. he he plays a detective who mm-hmm. you know questions Damien at a crime scene. And then starts putting together, well, Damien, uh, you know, almost every time he leaves his apartment, somebody drops dead in some weird accident. So he starts putting pieces together and he has a really interesting arc. And and um, I'm happy with that. I think David's been having a lot of fun. But as he um, he's got a really interesting place to go this season. So uh, I hope uh, people, you know, check him out. Yes. Yeah. 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 That it is a, a very neat uh, cast of characters. Very like mm-hmm. everyone's likable in mm-hmm. their own way. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So tonight you mentioned that the uh, show airs at ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. And you are having some writers over to your house. Yeah, is I'm that what's happening? Few, I'm having, what's yeah, I'm on? having a few writers over. Just a kind of like a an inner circle sort of thing. Just a you know, it's exciting. I think people are really proud of the work we've done. And, but, you know, I didn't want to do like a big bash or something. So it's just a couple of us having dinner and, and we'll just kind of watch it and make fun of ourselves and hopefully have a good time. And, and for you, um, mm-hmm. well, you're not filming right now. You're, right. Everything's, no, everything's, everything's in the can. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, okay. And so now you just, you watch it un, unfurl. And mm-hmm. will you be communicating with the fans? I will. Twitter yeah, and... yeah. Well, actually, it's really interesting. Um, I've never seen this before. You know, I, I, I'm on Twitter at Glenn Mazzara and and have r- had a great time, you know, over the past few years communicating with fans. Most people obviously know me from from Walking Dead. So, so you but, said it again, Walking Dead. I did say it? Okay. Sorry. That's what so you that's say when you've worked on the show, uh, a big hit show. Walking be, Dead. That might just be how I say it. So. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. That's cool. So, so, um, but there are fans, fans, particularly of Bradley's, who are excited about the show, and they've started doing fan art, and so they've been tweeting me, you know, sketches or paintings or whatever, it's, and and they're really excited. So, so I'm I'm communicating with them. I'm you know um, retweeting that that artwork and stuff. That's always fun. And so tonight I'll be responding. You have to be careful though, because when um, I can't answer questions or yes. stuff because you don't want to spoil anything, especially if someone's on the West Coast and they haven't seen it or something, or a lot of people watch it on on um, uh, you know, DVR or people in other countries. So, so I've made that mistake before, where I once answered a question and sort of spoiled something for an entire coast. So I had to be so, aware of that yeah, today yeah, because, guys, yeah. I got to watch the yeah. first five episodes, yeah. which was very exciting in yeah. my house the, uh, this you. weekend. But I had to be careful today. I was like, oh wait, I can't ask that because I could give it away. Yeah. So yeah. I can see how yes, you have to be yes. careful. But fun now that it's on TV, you can begin to let your begin to discuss it a bit more because you've been having to just tease it for a long time yes that's so, true yeah so yeah you can start let the twitter begin it, yeah great bring it yeah cool. <laughs> um thank you so much well, for joining you. us um thank you me. have three boys which is very impressive lots of guys in your household what will your sons be watching it with they with will the be watching tonight um well one's in college the other two the other two watched it this weekend we watched we sat around saturday night and we watched the the first four episodes they haven't seen number five yet cool. but um and my little guy the 12 year old thought it was really scary the other guy liked it he's he's a little harder to read but it's uh, <laughs> and, uh, but they liked it so um but they'll be sitting in with us and and hopefully uh, uh you know just having fun yeah it's just family tonight yeah yeah what a cool opportunity for all of our watchers here at After Buzz TV to get to talk to you oh, well, on you. the eve of the premiere of this yeah. series. Well, thank you. I'm and now I'm we excited. get to watch it roll. So very exciting to have cool. you here, Glenn. Thank well, you so thank, much. Thank you so much. That yes. Was fun, JJ. Thank you. And just remind folks out there, again, I know you mentioned your Twitter handle, but please repeat it and, and tell folks yeah. where they can find you. Um, at Glenn Mazzara. And uh, by the way, yeah. he says Glenn Mazzara, yeah. but that's because he's from New York. Yeah, it's actually spelled Glenn Mazzara. Yeah, my family messed that one up too. So, but it's, it's full on Glenn Mazzara. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From New York. Where yeah. are you from, by the way? From Queens. Of course you yeah. are. Yeah. Glenn Mazzara from Queens, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and please. You know, type something below about the show, Damien, if you're a fan, or about Glenn Mazzara himself. We'd love to hear from you. If you're listening on SoundCloud or iTunes, Mm -hmm. this is what I like to do. Thank you for listening. Glenn. Thank thank you. Where's your radio voice, Glenn? I'm not sure I have one. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for joining us. Take care. 
from executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.